Well, let's start here in downtown Detroit. This is the Madison Building, which has pretty much become uh, the high-tech hub of the downtown area. And it's a great place for us to start with a man who says that risk-taking is the key to business success. I sat down recently to talk with Josh Linkner about the companies that he's started and about the way that his favorite hobby applies to his business philosophy. When you think tech entrepreneur, you probably imagine kids creating companies in dorm rooms. You think this is such a good idea? I need the algorithm. I need the algorithm. Companies that grow to sprawling campuses deep in Silicon Valley. Of course, that happens. But you don't have to live in California to reach the pinnacle of tech success. You can be a kid from Metro Detroit who stayed here, like Josh Linkner. Josh is the founder and CEO of five companies so far, the best known being ePrize, the largest digital promotions agency in the world. ePrize ran promotions for many of the biggest brands. If you've ever looked under the cap of a Coke bottle for those little numbers, you've done business with Josh. In 2010, Josh traded his title to ePrize for many others. He founded Detroit Venture Partners to help launch new startups. He's a New York Times bestselling author, a much sought after keynote speaker, and a professional jazz guitarist. We met up at Cliff Bells in Detroit, where Josh likes to play. You believe, I think, that, that, that there's a, a real lesson for us, creatively speaking, about the way that jazz comes together. I've been a passionate jazz fan here in Detroit for 35 years uh, I've been playing jazz. Uh, which is hard to believe. I'm turning 45 this month, yeah. so but, you know, you 35, early. 35 years playing jazz. Yeah. Jazz, whether you someone likes listening to it or not, isn't the point. But it's an incredible art form because 99% of the notes that you play are improvised. They're made up as you go, and there's a, a very loose framework that that dictates some some guideposts. But it's really all about real time innovation. So you're making constant decisions in the face of ambiguity. You're constantly pushed to try new things, to take risks. And I really believe that that's the metaphor for leadership and success today, because the world is too complex and moving too quickly to even have an operating manual to follow and expect to win. So for all of us in our communities and our businesses, we need to have that same sense of jazz musician uh, improvisation as we go through our lives. One of the best little tricks in jazz, mm -hmm. which I think applies to business and, and life and community as well. So let's say you're playing and you're improvising and you hit a clunk or you hit a bad note, just play it twice more and call it art. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> In fact, Josh used money saved from playing jazz gigs to launch his first business at the age of 20. That first company led to the next and the next. What was the or germination, I guess, of E-Prize? Where'd it come from? Well, I've always been a contrarian, and I've always tried to disrupt a uh, previous industry. So in 1995, I launched one of the first web design companies. And now the data at that time would say there's no market for internet design. No, what is, no one even knew what that was. I would literally call people up and say, hey, have you ever heard of the internet? And they said, well, what's that? I said, well, I could build you a website. They said, well, what's a website? So, but early on, I, I was trying to, I saw where things were headed instead of where things were. So I built that company. And, and while building that company, which I sold in 1999, um, Volvo came to me and asked me, asked, asked me to build them a sweepstakes in conjunction with the launch of a new car. So I said, oh, you know, okay. Well, I got into the work and it was really hard. I mean, we had design and technology and legal and security and all these crazy issues to build an online sweepstakes. Um, but at the same and time- no model to follow. And no model to follow. But at the same time, I saw how powerful of a driver that was on human behavior because hundreds of thousands of people flocked to this website for the chance to win a car. So in 1999, when everyone else was following the internet advertising craze, I had a choice to make as I sold my other company. I could either be like the 174th mover in an industry of internet advertising, or I could be the first in internet promotions. So I said, all right, if everyone's going to go in that direction, why don't I go in the opposite direction? And that single decision, pursuing the path less traveled, really was a, was a big, important step in our progress because it allowed us to attract great talent. Clients wanted to take our call. We didn't get lost in the herd. Zagging when others expect you to zig works in jazz. It works in business. And it's one of Josh's main messages when he speaks to companies across the country. As I was uh, building my companies, I often would refer back to this old Mario Andretti quote. And the quote was, if you feel like you're in total control, you're probably not going fast enough. That's how entrepreneurs think. And frankly, that's how we all need to think. What are you hearing about Detroit out and about all over the country? People are fascinated. This is a story that resonates deeply. It's a personal, uh, visceral connection uh, because everybody in some way has a connection to Detroit. Even if they've never been here, they still can understand what it's like to be the underdog. 
Uh, and so people uh, sometimes have a little bit of a skepticism saying, oh, come on, are you, are you telling me this? And that, that's because we've been such a poster child for, for demise for so many years. Um, but more importantly, and, and far more frequently, people are leaning forward. Tell me more. I want to hear all about this. And they say, what can I learn from Detroit? How can I use that as a model for my own progress? The, both, both the challenges that Detroit has, has had and, and also the obstacles that it's overcome. Try to it, it, it look into your crystal ball. What does Detroit look like, say, five years from now, you think? Well, if you remember five years back and you walk through a lot of the areas, even here in downtown Detroit, a, a thriving business or something that was uh, clean and, and beautiful, beautified was a rarity. So that was the outlier. I think five years from now, it's the opposite. We've, we will have crossed the tipping point where if you see a dilapidated building or a store that's closed, that's the outlier. Because I think what you're going to see is us cross over to the majority of things really starting to, to hit, hit the groove. And so what I see is a vibrant community. This whole not notion of, of two Detroits, I think, has gone away over the, these next five years. So people are feeling deeply connected to one Detroit. I think you see a number of different industries that are, that are thriving. Yeah, we're going to always have an, a healthy automotive core, hopefully. But you also see biotech, and you see mobile apps and software, and you see uh, alternative energy and, and a number of other things that are contributing to more of a, of a diversified patchwork in our economy. Part of that patchwork is the section of downtown that's becoming Detroit's high-tech hub. Right over here is the Madison Theater Building. It had been vacant for like 15 years. Uh, Dan Gilbert purchased it and put a huge amount of investment in it to make it like ground zero of entrepreneurship. Yeah. And the theory is that if we could create a home for tech entrepreneurs, that physical space could transfer into some incredible things. So when we opened that building in 2011, there wasn't a single tech company anywhere around this area. Today, within one square block of this building, there are 70 tech companies busting at the seams, hiring creative class people, and helping to transform our, our Detroit economy. Josh's latest company is Fuel Leadership, a series of one-day events that bring big thinkers, business leaders, and celebrity entrepreneurs together for a mutual inspiration society. Each speaker is shaping the future through business, media, and technology. I'm not sure 10 years ago we would have seen our lives so centrally focused on this device that we hold in our hands, which has been great, but I also am very troubled every time I see like four people sitting at a table together, but they're all only focused on the screen in front of them. What, what happens technologically five to 10 years from now? The two biggest breakthroughs I think we can look forward to over these coming years, um, there's one called the Internet of Things, IoT, where right now, uh, when you're interacting with your mobile device, you're generally interacting, you know, you're a person using the device and connecting to something else. Uh, pretty soon, things will start talking to each other. So your coffee machine coordinates uh, with your refrigerator or your alarm clock coordinates with your calendar and tells you when to wake up to make your first meeting. So you're going to start to see devices that are all and sensors that are all connected to each other and machine to machine communication, which will really elevate the human condition. The other thing I think is really a I'm thing. not supposed to be afraid of that then. No, I don't think so. I mean, <laughs> okay. just like anything, it's a tool, How? you know. <laughs> uh, but the other the other thing I think is a big breakthrough is as the advances in healthcare. And we are in the same way that 15 years ago, we weren't even active on the internet, let alone using mobile devices, and now it's changed our world. Healthcare is set for that type of giant leap forward. And not just the way patients are treated, but things like nanotechnology, where, where doctors will be able to enter the bloodstream with a nanobot the size of a, of a molecular cell and go through and shoot down pathogens in the bloodstream like you're playing a video game. I mean, so the advances are, are, are profound when you look at stem cell research and nanotechnology and biotech to the point where life expectancy may leap from 80, 90 years old to 110, 120, 130 years of age. So I think that's going to have a significant impact in business and communities and education, even the way that we think about our careers. If you knew you were going to live to 130, you might not have one career. You might have several careers throughout your lifetime. And we're excited today to welcome Josh Linkner. Josh is an a, uh, investor in Detroit, an entrepreneur, and more importantly, he lives here. Welcome, Josh. Thanks. Great to be here. Josh has had several successful careers already in this lifetime, all based in innovation, disruption, embracing failure, and of course, improvisation. To me, the real thrill of it and the reason I do it is to leave a powerful impact wherever I am. Well, he inspired me to go home and pick up the guitar. He can really play, can't he? Uh, by the way, Josh's next Fuel Leadership event is coming up not in Detroit, but in Cleveland, and we put more information about that on our website at clickondetroit.com.